function probably does one, but I think all of you have read something written by her or had in some ways contact with, uh, without knowing with her. So she is really the mind behind the Transcripts User Conference. She is really the, uh, the mind behind all the dissemination activities. And she's an active researcher in the field of this whole phantom world that spread from the University College of London to, to the rest of us. And she's going to talk about keyword spotting in practice uh, now. And I'm thrilled to have her as the last speaker of this conference. Thanks. Okay, hi everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Okay, so yeah, thanks to Vice for the introduction and thanks everyone for staying around at the end of the conference. My presentation isn't too long, so you'll hopefully get to leave on time. So as Tobias said, I, one of my jobs is to do a lot of dissemination for the READ project, so I organise this conference, um, I do a lot of events and um, writing about READ, um, but in my other hat, I um, work on the Bentham project and I'm a historian working at University College London. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today and some of our experiments with handwriting recognition. So it's just a summary of my presentation. I'll first of all give an introduction to the Bentham project, then talk about our crowdsourcing project that's um, called Transcribe Bentham. I'll talk about how we've been working with HTR over the past five years, um, Finally, show our new toy, which is our keyword spotting tool, and then talk some more about the future as well, what we hope to do with HTR and how we hope to um, improve. So, Bentham, as we mentioned a few times already at this conference, but some of you might not still not know who he is. So, Bentham is an English philosopher and reformer. Um, he lived from 1748 to 1832. And he's most well known for coming up with the philosophy of utilitarianism. Um, and this is the idea about maximising pleasure and minimising pain for the greatest number of people in society. Um, he also invented the panopticon prison design, um, which is the idea that um, surveillance in a prison can encourage prisoners to be on their best behaviour. And he's also famous as well for a slightly strange reason. He requested that his body be preserved and publicly displayed after he died. Um, so this is Bentham's body, which we call his auto-icon. Um, and you can see this in the corridor at University College London if you come to visit us. So the mission of the Bentham project is to make the definitive scholarly edition of Bentham's published writings and also his unpublished manuscripts as well. Um, University College London set up what they called the Bentham Committee back in 1959 and in 1961 the first general editor of the edition was appointed, after which point the researchers who worked on the Bentham edition came to be known as um, the Bentham Project. Um, we have the current general editor of the Bentham edition here at the front, Professor Philip Schofield. So Bentham left behind a, a quite big collection of manuscripts which we held at University College London and the British Library as well. So there's about 75,000 folios in total, 60,000 um, at UCL at University College London and about 15,000 at the British Library. So far at the Bentham Project, in nearly 60 years, we've edited and published exactly 33 books written by Bentham. Um, but we expect that the total of the edition will be at least 80 volumes. So unfortunately we're not even halfway there yet. Um, so this is why we need new technologies and HTR to really speed things up. So we started to think about this um, back in 2010 when we received a one-year grant to prepare and launch a crowdsourcing project which is called Transcribe Benjamin. So in this project, it's an online initiative. Members of the public come to our website and we ask them to transcribe pages um, of the digital images of um, Bentham's manuscripts. What started as an experiment has developed into a really well-established initiative. Um, since 2010, um, volunteers have transcribed about 20,000 pages of Bentham's writings at a quite a high level of accuracy, um, and for that we owe them a huge amount of thanks. So crowdsourcing transcription in this way, working with volunteers, has proved to have three main advantages for the Bentham project, relating to preservation, scholarship, and public access as well. 
So first of all, it means we've digitised all of Bentham's papers. Um, they amount now to around 95,000 images from both University College London and British Library. And obviously the transcripts that our volunteers produce are helping to make these images more usable, make it help people to read them. Um, it's also important for our scholarship. We use the transcripts produced by volunteers um, to give us a head start in our editorial work. It means we don't have to transcribe everything from scratch. Transcripts are also useful for other researchers interested in Bentham. And then as well, the um, crowdsourcing side is a really good example of public engagement with history. So it allows us to spread the word about Bentham beyond academics and the public can become involved in a research project like ours, so it's very rewarding for both sides. So volunteers, um, their names will appear in the acknowledgements um, of uh, volumes of the edition where they've contributed transcripts, and we've already started to um, use some of their work in one of the publications, such as the Bentham Cookbook. So this is a real collection of recipes that Bentham wrote, for prisoners in his prison. As you can imagine, they're not the most appetising um, recipes. So this is a screenshot from our crowdsourcing website. So our website's called the Transcription Desk. Um, it's all on a media wiki framework. So similar, works in similar way to Wikipedia. Um, transcribers come, they register for an account. They can explore the manuscripts on the site, choose a page to transcribe and start transcribing. What we ask them to do is produce a diplomatic transcript, so an exact replica of everything that's on a particular page. Uh, this is a challenging task for two main reasons. So the first is Bentham's handwriting. This is a particularly bad example, so I wouldn't give this one to a new volunteer. But yeah, Bentham's handwriting was never neat and it got increasingly worse as he got older. Um, so volunteers also have to make sense of um, as on this page, the frequent additions, changes, um, deletions, and everything <coughs> goes along. And then secondly as well, volunteers have, we ask them to use TI, or the Text Encoding Initiative, markup of their transcripts. So on our transcription desk, we have a toolbar where they can click and add TI tags to mark the features of the manuscripts, like marginalia, paragraphs, um, additions. Once a volunteer has transcribed a particular page, they send us a message saying that that page is complete. Um, we then check each page that's submitted to us. The page eventually um, gets saved and uploaded to the UCL library repository um, where anyone can view it. Um, and we also spend a lot of time supporting our volunteers in other ways. Um, as, as Mark was talking about yesterday, setting challenges for them, doing events. Um, user documentation, um, answering all their questions, etc. Um, so to talk a bit about our users before I move on to talk about HTR. So in common with many crowdsourcing projects, Transcribe Bentham um, is not really dependent on a crowd, it's really a small group of active users who do most of the work. So our website gets um, about 300 to 350 unique views every month, but only a, a handful of people actually register for an account and transcribe something. So since Transcribe Bentham began eight years ago, there's been about 660 users who have transcribed something at least once. But it's about 4% of this 660 who are really our core users, um, who we call our super transcribers. So they're the ones that have done most of the work. There's about 31 people who have transcribed 19,000 pages, which is about 95% of all the pages transcribed on the transcription desk. So it's a phenomenal amount of work for the, a really small group of people that have done. Levels of participation amongst the super transcribers vary. So some of them come and go every few months or even every few years. Um, and there tends to be um, between three and five people participating um, every week. 15 of our super transcribers have contributed something in the past year, and as I said, some of the others come and go. So what's important about these statistics is that it really shows that we're dependent on quite a small number of people um, who have made, they've made a huge achievement. They need help, basically. So we need to make sure we support our existing super transcribers. 
Um, they love transcribing and they do it very well, so we need to make sure that um, we keep them happy. But we also want to encourage new people to take part, people who might be scared of Bentham's handwriting. Um, we want them to take part as well. Um, we know from the surveys that we do that the difficulty of reading Bentham's handwriting is a real barrier to participation. Um, so we hope we can simplify this experience of reading Bentham's handwriting with HTR. So we started working with HTR in Transcribus, um, and Transcribus, sorry, in 2013 as one of the partners in the Transcriptorium project, which was the forerunner project to read. So at this point, I think it's fair to say that the cap we were quite uncertain about the capabilities of the technology, and the technology is obviously advanced, advanced already quite a lot in the past five years. So what was decided was that we would focus on training a model to recognise some of the easier writing in the Bentham collection. Um, and there's a lot of pages in the collections that are actually written by Bentham secretaries where the handwriting is very neat. So on this task we collaborated with Alejandro and his colleagues at the Pattern Recognition and Human Language Technology Research Centre at the Polytechnic University of Valencia who were part of Transcriptorium and are now part of READ as well. So they helped us create um, nearly 900 pages of training data, um, images and transcripts from the Bentham collection, and they processed them, um, but in, under transcri Transcriptorium they were working with hidden Markov models rather than neural networks. And the best result that we managed under Transcriptorium was a HTR model with a character error rate of about 18%. So this was a, a promising start, but we hoped that better results um, would be possible. So when we came to the READ project, we moved on to working with the SITLAB team at the University of Rostock and neural network technology and that was integrated in transcribers. So again, we used the same set of training data, this set of ground truth relating to pages written by Bentham secretaries, so quite neat handwriting written in English. And the results of this one gave us a model with a character error rate of just 3% on the test set. We also created a matching dictionary based on the printed edition of Bentham's, what Bentham's collected works. Um, and both the dictionary and this um, model are publicly available to all transcribers users under the title English Writing M1. So if you see that in transcribers, that's the Bentham model for his the writing of his secretaries. So a uh, character error rate of just 3% obviously seems um, really impressive, but the complexities of the Bentham collection mean that we could not get that kind of accuracy rate on every page. So the model was trained on what we considered to be some of the easiest writing from the collection, and therefore it struggles to um, process more difficult writing and transcribe it. So we're talking Bentham's own handwriting, writing by other secretaries where the handwriting might be more difficult, um, and also Bentham's correspondence as well. So the Bentham collection contains a lot of incoming correspondence from all the people Bentham was writing to. Um, so um, that needs to be recognised as well. So if we're taking just a random page from the collection, trying to recognise it with this model, we can get a character error rate of probably between 5 and 20% on a, um, a random page. So you can see an example here, and so this is an example of an automatic transcript. It is Bentham's handwriting, but this is Bentham on a good day, so it's um, relatively neat for Bentham. And on this, this page, it's a character error rate of about 8.9%. A real strength of this model, this English Writing M1 model, is that it can generate good transcripts of other collections, of simple handwriting, especially from the same period, so 18th to 19th century. Um, at last year's Transcribers User Conference, um, Deborah Cornell from the Georgian Papers programme was talking about how they were using this model to transcribe papers written by the English King George III. And many Transcribers users have also used the Bentham, this Bentham model as a base model when they're creating new model, training new models. So this basically means that you take advantage of what the system has already learned from reading the writing, learning to read the writing of Bentham secretaries, and it gives you a, a head start, basically, on your recognition. 
So our next challenge was to try to improve the recognition of Bentham's <coughs> most difficult handwriting. Um, and here, the advances in layout analysis, again, coming from the SITLAB team at Rostock, were really key for us. Um, it meant we could now automatically detect the lines in all of the Bentham images um, to a really high level of accuracy, um, and so create ground truth more quickly in transcribers. So we created a few hundred pages of training data in transcribers, uh, manually by uploading images, um, segmenting them automatically, and then transcribing each page. Um, we, copy, we basically copy and pasted in lines from our existing transcripts. Our first milestone was a model that was trained on 57,000 transcribed words, and this had a character error rate of 26% on the test set. So you can see it's, it's really challenging handwriting. We then decided to experiment with text-to-image matching. So this is, uh, again, something coming from SITLAB in the University of Rostock. So it's where an algorithm automatically goes through and tries to match images to existing transcripts that you have and automatically create training data for text recognition. So we have lots of transcripts, so we thought we'd try that. But the result created um, a lot of errors, so we decided that it was quicker to just transcribe ourselves manually. So we carried on doing that. Um, and then the next model that we had is now transcribed on about 81,000 words, which is around 350 pages from the collection. It's trained on Bentham's, some of Bentham's worst handwriting, and the test set is again about 17%. So this is an example here. This is some of, as I said, this is some of Bentham's worst handwriting, and the automated transcripts below. And you can see in the transcript um, that it's, it's making up words um, that aren't really there and it's struggling to read things that are crossed out and all these sorts of complications and yeah on this page the character error rate is nearly 34 percent so really quite high so this error rate is obviously still too high for us to get a useful automated transcription of bentham's most difficult handwriting that could be used for scholarly editing as we we're hearing this morning you really need quite an accurate transcript for scholarly editing and with something that has a character error rate of 35%, it's probably going to be way too time consuming and annoying, to be honest, for us to correct all the errors. Um, and when we have, e we have experts working on Bentham, so it might be quicker for us to just transcribe from scratch. But having worked with transcribers for many years now, we know that the technology is improving all the time. Um, so we're hoping with more pages of training data um, and HTR Plus as well, um, that our results will improve and the future is always bright. <laughs> so although we cannot yet realise the complete transcription of Bentham's handwriting, what we have been able to do is start to experiment with keyword spotting um, and we're really excited about this. Um, so as we've seen throughout the, com the conference, Keyword spotting technology can work well with HTR, even with HTR models that have quite high error rates. So even going up to 30% character error rate, it can still um, find um, words that it's looking for. Uh, this is because it uses statistical models trained for text recognition to search through probability values assigned to characters. So basically this means that the engine returns what it thinks is the best guess for the word you're searching for, but also a long list of, of other possible guesses um, that might match your word. So this means that with keyword spotting you can um, find words in a collection even if those words have been mistranscribed by the HTR on its first best guess. So for this task, we again partnered with, the, with Alejandro and his colleagues at the Passion Recognition and Human Language Technology Centre at Valencia. And what we did first of all is we gave the Valencia team all of our images, so this is about 95,000 pages, both from UCL and the British Library. And we also gave them access to the training data that we had created in transcribers. So this is the easy pages and the more difficult pages as well. So the breadth of the Bentham collection meant that the images all had to be standardised in various ways before they could be processed for keyword spotting. And the Valencia team did a, um, a huge amount of work on this, so distinguishing between handwritten, printed and blank pages, um, getting rid of duplicate images, 
sorting things into different hands and different languages as well. There's several languages in the collection. Putting all the file names to be consistent, um, changing the resolution of images because the resolution of the UCL images were different to the resolution of the British Library images. So there was a lot of pre-processing that was necessary before we could search through all the images. Once the images were clean, they, we also had to undergo layout analysis, which Alejandro mentioned in his um, presentation. So this was done in Transcribus in batch mode using the Rostock um, segmentation tool. Um, once we had segmented the 95,000 images, we did a check on a random sample and agreed, thankfully, that the um, segmentation was accurate enough um, so we didn't have to correct everything. And basically by segmenting the entire collection, it means um, you can search every page. So the Valencia team then started work on the ground truth that we created in Transcribus. Um, and as Alejandro explained, they processed this with their neural network, HTR, and probabilistic word indexing toolkit, and to train new models for us. So they tested the resulting models on different test sets, um, from the collection, um, and this is just an example of um, two different test sets that they used for the UCL collection. So the first one is the character error rate for testing the a recognition on an um, easy test, a page of easy test set, um, a test set of easy pages, so pages written by a medical secretary. The character error rate is around 6%, it's quite low. And then there's a hard test set, so this is pages that are written by Bentham. With that, the character error rate is higher, um, about 15%. So these results are comparable to the results that we were getting for recognition with the models from Rostock um, for Bentham's for the easy writing and for the difficult writing as well. And they're also um, slightly better than the other collections that Valencia are working with that Alejandro mentioned, the medieval chancery records and the records of the Spanish playwright Lope de Vega. So based on these results, the Valencia team have created a web interface for us for keyword spotting and um, the entirety of the Bentham papers. So you can go to this website um, and users can search through 19,000 images. Um, and this figure was reached after um, blank and printed pages were removed from the search results. So the accuracy of the spotted words depends on what you're searching for and the difficulty of the handwriting, but it is possible to find what you're looking for even in some of Bentham's school. Um, and there could be as many as 25 million words um, waiting to be found. Um, and also you can search pages that have never been transcribed, which is really exciting for us. So I'll do a demonstration for you now, hopefully. Okay, so this is the website. Um, you can find it if you just go to the Transcribe Bentham site um, and there's a link to it from there. So this is the home page basically. You type what you want to search for in the box up here. So we're going to search for the word democracy. Um, here's what they call the confidence slider. So you can choose how confident you want the system to be about the results that it's giving you. So if you have the confidence set at a low number, you basically saying, I want as many results as possible, even ones that you're not sure about. If you set the confidence at a high level, you're saying that you only want the engine to return results that it's quite sure are the right word. So you <coughs> just click search and then you're away. It searches really quick, as you can see, and then it tells you how many boxes it's found are relevant. So it, it basically categorizes the results by box, which is how we categorise the Bentham material in the archive. So we can open up a few boxes and see some results. So here you get the individual page. You can see who actually wrote it. So this is a page by Bentham. You can see the level of confidence that the machine thinks that it's, um, it's found the word at. And then, yeah, you can see here it's found. Um, the word democracy. Another example, this is a bit of a nasty page, so here, here it is in some marginalia. Um, and this one is um, a page of, it says it's bent, bent, but I think it's actually secretarial hand, and then again it's founded as well. 
So it's really cool, it's really quick, we had lots of people experimenting with it so far. So we've had some analytics on site, so I've been able to watch what people are doing, which has been very satisfying. <laughs> um, so we launched the site on the 15th of October, so just a few weeks ago. And since that time, we've had 140 unique users from 25 countries making searches on the site. So some of these searches have been more surprising than others. So we had a user in Italy that was searching for the word Naples. We had a user from America that was searching for Jesus. And we had a user from Austria that was searching for Jesus. These, these are all real. Um, when I publicised the site, I really wanted the transcribe benefit volunteers to have a go and see what they could find as well. Um, so I set up a, a Google spreadsheet where people could record their searches that they were doing and also the accuracy of the results um, that they were finding. So this is a few examples. Um, so one, one person searched for the word legislature. So Bentham was a legal um, philosopher, so this is obviously one of his favourite words. And if you search at 80% confidence, you can find more than a thousand, a thousand instances of that word. The second example was search for the word muzzy. So Bentham liked to make up words. So this is one of the words that he coined. Um, but unfortunately, we weren't able to find that with keyword spotting at 80% confidence. This mainly reflects the training data as well, but it's obviously saying legislature much more than he's saying muzzy, which means uncertain or confused, according to Bentham. The last example is an example from a transcribed Bentham volunteer. So a volunteer called Jill Haig got in touch with me and said that she was interested in finding out whether Bentham had talked about the Peterloo Massacre of 1819, which is a famous event in the when um, cavalry charged into a crowd of people protesting and demanding democratic reform. And there's a film out about it in the UK as well, and um, so it's a topic of the current discussion. So she searched for the term Peterloo in the papers, but didn't find any reference to it. But she did, then did various combinations of the words Manchester and Massacre, and was able to find 11 instances where Bentham um, was talking about this event. So that shows that how you can be inventive with your um, searches to find what you're looking for. And so, and thanks to Jill for the example. So, use cases for keyword spotting for us. It's already a fantastic resource that um, will be helpful to anyone interested in Bentham's philosophy. It can help us at the Bentham Project um, to find um, things that we're interested in and many things that we haven't read before. It will allow people to quickly investigate Bentham's concepts and his correspondence as well. And I also hope that it will be useful for our volunteers in Transcribe Bentham. They can find subjects that they're interested in to transcribe. So we've already done a huge amount of work so far, um, but we're not going to stop. Um, this is a few suggestions for future directions that we want to go in. So firstly, we want to connect the Valencia keyword spotting tool into Transcribers. So this would allow us to use this technology to search in the transcribers expert client, just like you can search um, with the Rostock technology. Um, we could also connect the Valencia keyword spotting tool to our other digital Bentham resources that we have, like um, the online catalogue and the Transcribe Bentham website as well. Secondly, we want to improve the accuracy of our existing models. So we want to, as soon as I get home, I'm going to be testing out HTR Plus. And we want to also want to build up more specific training sets. So at the moment, more than half of our existing training data is easy handwriting from the collection. So we need more of them that's most difficult handwriting. We also need to think about other languages. There's around 2,000 pages in the collection written in French. Um, so if we have more focused sets and more focused models, we might be able to get better results. And lastly, we want to integrate HTR directly into the Transcribe Bentham crowdsourcing platform. So the idea is that users will be able to check and correct automated transcripts. And if they don't want to do that, they can just continue transcribing as usual. And if they get stuck on a particular word, they can ask the user to suggest what it thinks that word might be. So we believe this is good for our existing users who are expert transcribers 
but it could also be good for new users who are daunted by Bentham's handwriting and need a helping hand to get started. Um, and we hope that this new version of Transcribe Bentham with HTR will promote greater user engagement, increase the transcription rate, and therefore bring us closer to um, finishing Bentham's collected, the publication of Bentham's collected works. So after the end of the Reef project, the future of Transcribe Bentham um, and our experiments with HTR will all be dependent on us securing further funding. Um, but we're hopeful that we can join the Read Co-op um, and continue taking part and cooperating with all our colleagues. So as Bentham once said, many hands make light work. Um, so I can't finish without thanking all the people um, that made everything that I've talked about possible. Um, so my thanks go to my colleagues at the Bentham Project, all the volunteers at Transcribe Bentham who do so much hard work, um, the teams in Valencia, Rostock um, and Innsbruck, and our other read colleagues as well. Um, so I'll stop there and say thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Louise. Uh, are there any questions? Behind you. Hello. Oh, thank you. Um, I've got a question which I think is half for you, and um, about half for you, about three quarters for the transcribers team as a whole, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Um, regarding the naming of the model, um, English writing M1. Um, not my choice. Okay. <laughs> because speaking as an outside coming in, I have heard this. If I just seen that, just as I'd assume that the one meant very early in the history of English. <laughs> so I think, okay, Old English and M may be Mercian. <laughs> so, yeah, um, sure. is there any, and obviously there seems to be this intention to have many models publicly available. Of, of, like, this is where the question goes more broadly, I think, for the transcribers team as a whole. But are there any plans to have, so certainly, um, publicly available models to have a more logical, sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, um, naming protocol? I'll just say, um, so for the English writing M1, um, yeah, it was chosen before my time. Um, but when you train your own model with transcribers, you can choose the name. So at the moment, all users are free to choose the name that they wish. But Gunter might want to say more about standardising the way we name models. <laughs> I, I was the one calling. <laughs> 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 oh, in that case. And it was a <laughs> one second position. <laughs> so, um, Ago, or something, and then we came up the first time with the public version. So sorry for that. Uh, um, I'm not sure if we will have a, a naming convention because uh, my experience with naming conventions, uh, well, I'm not sure. But what we need is uh, really that people can easily make their models available, as I talked yesterday. And uh, there was a suggestion from uh, Nico. Um, that um, the default mode should be that the, the model is uh, public and that you should decide to make it not public. I'm not sure if this is uh, really um, the way, but definitely it will be easy to publish a model. And uh, as I said, it is also very important to have some metadata available and, and of course, uh, um, to have a look to the, to the pages or at least to some lines. This is, from my point of view, necessary. Other question? Did you search for optimization? Um, no. <laughs> the because it's in the title, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just a small question. How do you communicate with the user the limitations? Or, like, what is it actually? The limitations of keyword spotting? Yes, exactly. Like, that there are there may be the things which were not found like completely, which they may be in the manuscripts and also. Yeah, so the main way I communicate with users of Transfer Bentham is um, through blog posts and newsletter. Um, so the all the active volunteers um, are signed up to get a newsletter basically where I tell them every month what's going on with the project. Um, they also contacted me about what they've been doing the searches and for example that's where I got the example that was in the, the paper. Is that what you mean? No, 
I meant the random users, you know, like like visiting your web page, which are not who are not familiar what it is. Yeah, sure. Um, so this this website is made by the people in Valencia, so it's really just it's a prototype tool really to show off the uh, the technology. So there are user guidelines on there, and they explain how they give a brief explanation of how technology is working, and that it's it's not going to solve all your problems and find every single every single word. Um, but as I say on our website as well, I will keep people updated with our experiments with keyword spotting in HTR and um, how the accuracy is improving and what still to do. So I think uh, we're heading towards the end. Thanks a lot, Louise. the last two days with the microphone and uh, Johanna was key in organizing this event in, in Vienna but I think uh, it's up to Günther to, to take the mic now. Yes, yeah, so um, I, my list of thank yous is also uh, very long so thanks to all who organized this, uh, Luisa and Eva and of course the team from uh, Tobias Maria, uh, the team from uh, here from Vienna, Florian, Markus, Fabian and so on. So that's it was really great to be here again. It was great to see you, and um, I think we learned again a lot. Um, for us, it was really amazing to see what people are doing with the technology, what they are doing now, also with the API, which was really new this year, and um, but of course also with the graphical user interface and all the interesting projects which are coming up. I can say that. For me, every time I see a new document and a new challenge and a, a new collection uh, and the way to, to use it, and the project is every time I think fascinating. It's really fascinating to see the treasures of archives and how researchers are dealing with this and which questions are important for them and it's really amazing to, to see um, this coming into being. Concerning the Bandcamp project, uh, there's also a very <coughs> big thank you to the Bandcamp project and Philip and Luisa because uh, they were also part uh, of the first Transcriptorium and one objective was to, to set up something where this transcription, transcribed Bandcamp project goes in the direction of technology but uh, it always turned out that if you touch a running project, it's really uh, a major challenge. And, uh, and um, so still the work is done uh, in the media wiki. But <coughs> my feeling is that uh, nowadays it's really uh, a switch uh, could be done. And, and I'm confident that maybe in 2019 we will see this coming into being. But uh, the rest of the, the, the input we got from, from there was marvelous. Yeah, so thanks again, and I hope to see you, or at least some of you, next year. Maybe here, maybe in another place, we will see. Uh, but um, um, definitely, we will have a uh, next uh, user conference, and I'm already looking forward for this. Thank you.